I started to see this topic everywhere, in podcasts, in articles, in books. And I decided, you know what, Mel, let's just dig into this. This is part one. And Dr. Mindy is going to start off with the significant, irrefutable research and documented benefits of fasting as a health protocol. Do I eat this? Do I eat that? Do I exercise? What kind of exercise? Is it peptides? Is it this thing? Is it that thing? Am I counting calories? Just tell me what the hell to do. Hey, it's your friend Mel, and welcome to the Mel Robbins Podcast. So a couple of months ago, I was out with some friends, and we were talking about a bunch of stuff, and then the topic of intermittent fasting came up. And they kept going on and on and on about how it was making them feel better. And so I kept like putting one nacho in my mouth after another as I was listening to them talk about how they've lost weight and they just feel more alert. And so I was curious. I'll admit, I was curious. And I asked my friends, all right, so what is this thing that you're doing and how exactly do you do it? And my friend turned to me and I got to tell you, my friend is not a medical doctor, not a nutritionist. This is how they said it. Basically, Mel, when I wake up, I don't eat my first meal until about 11 a.m. I'm like, that's it? They said, yeah. I said, really? That's it. You don't eat breakfast. You start eating at 11 a.m. That's it? And they said, yes. And I said, well, look, if it can make my pants feel a little looser and my brain a little sharper, I'm in. I started to see this topic everywhere, in podcasts, in articles, in books. And I decided, you know what, Mel, let's just dig into this because you've got questions about it. Like for example, how exactly is intermittent fasting different from dieting? Is it healthy? Is it true what the headlines say, that it can melt body fat, that it can increase your focus, that it can decrease anxiety and depression? And does it really help you live longer? Well, according to one of the world's leading researchers and experts on this topic, Dr. Mindy Peltz, best-selling author, she says the answer is yeah, it can help you do all that, and it's even more exciting than that. Check this out. The New England Medical Journal, they reviewed 85 studies on fasting as a health protocol. And the research is so compelling about this as a health protocol that the New England Medical Journal recommends this as a frontline intervention for treating depression, cardiovascular disease, obesity, issues like dementia. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. In fact, there is so much mind-blowing and amazing and empowering information about this free protocol that you can use that I've decided that we got to break this conversation with Dr. Mindy into two parts, into a master class about fasting and the science around it and a step-by-step -step guide about fasting protocols and how you can use them so that they unleash your body's natural ability to heal itself and become healthier. Yes, you heard me right. Today, this is what you and I are going to cover. This is part one, and Dr. Mindy is going to start off with the significant, irrefutable research and documented benefits of fasting as a health protocol. She is going to teach you about the two different energy systems in your body and how fasting helps you tap into both of them. She's going to walk you through the six different kinds of fasting protocols and their specific research-backed benefits. You're going to understand why nothing that you have tried in the past has helped you to get control of your health. You're going to realize you're not the problem, and you're going to be empowered because you're going to know more about how your body functions, and you're going to be so motivated and equipped to try this zero-cost fasting protocol for better health in your life. We will cover in part two specific fasting protocols for women. So if you have tried intermittent fasting and you didn't see anything happen, right? Or it happened at, or you tried it and it worked for a little bit, but then nothing happened. It's probably because you followed the wrong protocol. You were doing it the way that the dudes need to do it. And that is not going to work for you if you identify as a woman. All right, please help me welcome Dr. Mindy Peltz, who has transformed the lives of millions of people with her free videos and best-selling books and all of her research to adopt a healthy fasting protocol. And today, she's told all those clients that are Olympic athletes, Academy Award-winning actors, and Silicon Valley CEOs to step aside because she has got an appointment with someone way more important, and that's you and me, baby. All right, Dr. Mindy, welcome to the Mel Robbins Podcast. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. 
I can't wait to dig into this. And let's just start with the basics. In the simplest terms, what is fasting? Fasting is a healing state you put your body in that you can only get there by avoiding food for a certain period of time. Oh. When your blood sugar goes down, what ends up happening is you trigger all these healing responses. So it's in the absence of food, the body heals. So fasting is this miraculous internal system in your body that will burn fat, will supercharge your brain, will kill hunger, will improve your sleep, will take away chronic pain, and will slow down aging. It's the most miraculous tool that your body's ever been built with. It's incredible. Huh. I don't think I've ever heard anybody describe it like that. That when you go without food for a certain period of time, it impacts blood sugar, which then triggers all of these incredible, well-documented and researched health benefits. You are clearly absolutely so passionate about this. Why are you so excited about fasting? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. Um, on a big level, we need a health tool that everybody can do and everybody can afford. And I'll share a story with you. During the pandemic, I was brought on to talk to a, a group of high school teachers. The principal had been following my YouTube channel and she asked if I would come on and talk about the immune system and things they could, these, her teachers could do to improve their immune system. And when I went on, I talked about food and supplements. And at the end of the whole Zoom call, one of the brave teachers raised his hand and he said, I, I hear what you're saying. I just, I can't, if I'm looking at a jar of peanut butter in the grocery store and I'm supposed to buy the one with the right oils, it's $8 more than the one with mm. the bad oils. And that's $8 I do not have. And then another brave teacher raised her hand and said, I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I go to work at three in the afternoon. I am exhausted. So the best place for me to go is through the McDonald's drive through It's just mm. an easier tool for me. And what I realized after that conversation is we have to have a tool that works for everybody's health that everybody can do. The busiest executive down to the person who's living, living paycheck to paycheck. And when you look at it through that lens, fasting is the tool that can put your body into this healing state that will overturn metabolic syndrome. That's why I'm so passionate about it. We only have 12% of Americans that are metabolically fit. So what are we going to do? Well, how are we going to help these people? And fasting is the, the quickest door into this healing state. Dr. Mindy, I'm so glad that you're here. What is the, you used a term metabolic something that fasting puts you in a something, something. I didn't even follow that word. What, what, what were you talking about? Yeah. So great question. The best way to look at fasting is our body has two ways to make energy. One is when our blood sugar goes up. I call that the sugar burner system. And one, when the blood sugar goes down, it will switch over into the second energy system called your fat burning energy system. It's very much like a hybrid car. So it ha we have two different ways that we can propel our body. Okay. So the only way you get into this fat burning state is by avoiding food for a certain period of time. And this, and this is called metabolic switching. So our body is meant to switch into the fat burner state and then switch out into the sugar burner state. And it should be switching in and out of these two states all day long. When we look at people who have poor metabolic health, they're not switching. They're not getting over into the fat burning state. They are, they are staying in the sugar burner state. So they're never getting the healing mechanisms that can happen over there. I'm, I, my mouth is sort of on the floor and my mind is spinning like a treadmill right now because one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is because I'm freaking confused. 
I think everybody's like super confused. Do I eat this? Do I eat that? Do I exercise? Do I, what kind of exercise? Is it peptides? Is it this thing? Is it that thing? Am I counting calories? Just yep. tell me what the hell to do. And then, yep. you know, with women in our 40s and 50s, it's also like, what the hell is going on with my hormones? And so you Amen. just simplified it into yep. two systems where yep. your body is either creating energy that you get from the food that you're eating, or it's creating energy from the stored fat that you're burning. It, bingo. You got it. It's, it's and you're literally gonna, that simple. And you're going to teach us today different ways that we can utilize this tool of fasting in order to switch between these stages that your body needs to either be uh, gaining sugar energy or whatever energy from food or gaining energy by burning the stored fat in your body. And your body needs to be switching between these two modes in order to be healthy, in order to thrive. Oh my gosh, I think I am starting to get something that I totally did not get, Dr. Mindy. And we're only like two minutes into this. Yes. It's so, so here's how you can think about it. I, this excites me because this is what I'm trying to do is teach people about their bodies. You, you, we have given all of our health power away. We mm -hmm. give it away to medications, to supplements, to doctors, to the culture. We give it all away, but we forgot that in, innately inside of us is this incredible wisdom. And because we didn't get an owner's manual when we were born, we don't understand it and we've made it very complicated. So one thing I just want to make a note on is this will help you. What, what did the cave people do? If we go back to our primal days, they didn't have DoorDash. They didn't have a refrigerator. They didn't have a pantry. Food was not a given. So in the morning when they came out of the cave, they had to go find food. And sometimes that food was really easy to find. And sometimes that food was not easy to find. So they ha our innate human body had to have another fuel source that kicked in in the absence of food that made our mind sharper, our energy increase, made us focus more, made us happier, made our immune system stronger so that we could go find food to survive. And, once, and then once we found food, we were meant to eat. It's called feast, famine, cycling. But we have so much access to food now. I can sit on my couch and I can pick up my phone and I can have food delivered to my front door. It's so incredibly convenient that we've just tossed away this other energy system. And that's what I'm asking people to bring back. And what I found so compelling in your extensive research and in the work that you do is that you're you're basically empowering us to bring back something that our body needs, which is the ability to switch between these states of consumption and a state of depri deprivation where you restrict the eating in a very intentional way. Yes. So that you trigger all of this amazing programming in your body to burn fat, to bring up energy, and we're going to get into the health benefits. We're going to get into the how. We're going to get get into the different types of um, fasting that you can consider and the different benefits and the difference for men and women. But I would love to start with, how the hell did you even get into this? <laughs> okay, well, it's a great question. Um, you know, I... I became incredibly fascinated with food at an, a very early age. This is actually a funny story because the first research I saw was um, based off of Dr. Osumi's work. So Dr. Osumi is a Japanese scientist who won the Nobel Prize in medicine and physiology in 2016 for a term called autophagy that we'll, we'll get into. So autophagy is that when the cells sense that blood sugar and nutrients have gone down, it triggers a healing response inside the cell that, that makes the cell stronger. Hmm. So this study came out and or he, he was, his study came out in like, you know, 2014 and he was, he was given the Nobel prize in medicine and physiology. And so I was studying that. And then I thought, and then the intermittent fasting craze started. 
And I thought, oh, okay, go without food for 13 hours. I could probably do that one day. Let me try it one day. And the first day I tried it, it was horrible. I was like, why am I doing this? Like, I'm, I'm having, I'm suffering. Um, and so, but then I was committed because that's my personality. It's like, well, let me try it another day and let me try it another day. And each day I tried it, what was happening is that I was not only noticing that my perimenopausal body was changing, mm. like, you know, I was 43 at the time, that was 10 years ago. And like, you know, the belly fat was starting to accumulate, the brain fog was starting to kick in, the exhaustion at three was starting to, to happen, the cognition and focused issues were starting to appear. And all of that went away when I started just within like three to four days. I noticed at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like on the third day of intermittent fasting, I was like, wait, why am, I not, why am I not tired? Why am I not crashing? And then I just kept going and going and pretty soon I figured out, wow, this second fuel source is called a ketone and we can get into this in a moment. And ketones are 50% of the fuel for your brain. So if you're not actually dipping into the fat burning energy system, making ketones, you're, you're depriving your brain of 50% of its fuel source. And I gave my 43 year old body that fuel source back. And when I did, it was like my brain came back online, my energy came back online and I kept my weight where I wanted it to be because it had to burn fat in order to make a ketone. Okay, I think I just heard a collective gasp from every single woman in the 194 countries where this podcast is syndicated and all of her sons and daughters go, wait, did Dr. Mindy just say she started using fasting when she was 43 to address brain frog? frog. See, I, I need to fast because I can't <laughs> even like say the damn word. Brain fog to melt belly fat, to get her energy back, to basically combat the symptoms of perimenopause, which is a hormone change for women, all at zero cost by simply paying attention to the metabolic cycles in your body that are designed to operate a certain way. Is that what you're saying, Dr. It, Mindy? A thousand percent. This is why when you ask me why I'm so passionate, I'm like, and it's free. It's free. And your body does it. And all you've got to do is train it to stay in this fasted state. That, that is like my, when, when people ask me why I'm on a mission, I'm like, because our bodies are brilliant. And when you look at the perimenopausal woman, she's suffering. And nobody's giving her answers. Let's start with a healing mechanism that already exists and teach her how to dip in and out and metabolically switch to help her hormonal challenges. That's where the discussion needs to start. Holy shit. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you because, you know, what's interesting about we women is we, you give us a problem, we're like a dog with a bone. Yeah. Oh and yet the hormone issues that women face all the way from when your cycle begins to perimenopause to pregnancy to menopause like none of like it's so freaking complicated that every single woman I know I don't know I don't care if she has a PhD public high school degree or a PhD in biology we're all like what the fuck am I supposed to do but when I think also about fasting I think about the fact that globally it is a part of many cultures and religious practices and ceremonies and has been historically since the beginning of time. Yeah. It's when I first, st I started with Dr. Osumi's research. So when I first understood the healing mechanisms of autophagy, I then went and I was down hours. I would spend like, I spent a couple of years, like 20, 30 hours a week, just every possible study I could find. And do you know that most of the studies were coming from people who were who practice Ramadan, because with Ramadan there's no food from sun up to sundown, and so and they do it for thirty days, and so a lot of the research stemmed from that spiritual practice. 
But then if you extend it, you know, to every single religion, and to your point, we've got it, ancient heal. It's a part of every ancient healing tool. Hippocrates, the founder of of modern medicine, he has many documented statements about just take food out of the equation and the body will heal. So yeah, it goes way back. This is not a new innovative tool. This is something we've been using for years to heal ourselves, but we lost our way because we live in a food addicted culture. And you know, if I'm gonna be really opinionated here, there, it, there's no, who profits from fasting? Big pharma doesn't, big food doesn't. <laughs> Nobody profits from it. That's so true. Why, why would the media, why would the media bring it? Why, this is what I, actually I've had to deal with in putting fasting to the world is every little negative thing about fasting gets so much immediate media attention because the only person that wins when they fast is the human that does it. They're not spending any money. Well, it's true. Who is paying for the marketing campaign to say, yeah. You don't need to eat that much. You don't need to buy this thing. You don't need to try this diet. Yep. And one of the things that I found very convincing about your work is the amount of studies that you cite. And I know that in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2019, they reviewed more than 85 studies. And they had a definitive declaration about the power and the documented research-backed benefit of introducing intermittent fasting. Can you please un explain that to everybody yeah. listening? Oh my God, that's the best study. I'm so happy you brought that one to the surface because when it came out, the first thing I thought was, oh my gosh, the New England Journal of Medicine, that is like that is like the, the medical world's hero. And they went even as far as to say it should be the first line of treatment for these conditions. Let me tell you some of them. Um, diabetes and metabolic challenges, neurological conditions like uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, you know, the things that are destroying the, our, our neurons in our brain. Well, hello, this is happening. Let's talk about Alzheimer's. It's happening to more women than men. They go on to like wound healing and um, energy systems. And they even gave a protocol in that study. They gave like, you can, here's the different ways you can intermittent fast. It's one of the greatest studies. It got a moment in time and then it went away. <clears throat> What's interesting about it is it actually said that intermittent fasting should be used as, quote, the first line of treatment for yes. obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative brain conditions, cancer, and that in the New England Journal of Medicine stated that intermittent fasting has anti-aging effects and yeah. nine cellular healing benefits. Can you explain how the fasting protocols are not a diet? Yes. What's yes. the difference? Thank you. Yeah. So I think, thank you for bringing this up because if we look at it as a diet, then we're going to see it as a trend. And then we're going to see it as something we're either done right or done wrong. So we have to take it out of the diet culture. And in Fast Like a Girl, that's the first thing I do is that first chapter is like, here are all the diet myths we need to push away. So here's why it's not a diet, is that you can take any food style you want and, I, and you can put it in what I call an eating window. So let's say that, you know, one of the, the a really interesting study was uh, eight, eight to 10 hours of eating, leaving the rest of the day for fasting can actually overturn the meta poor metabolic health. So if you are eating at McDonald's or you're, um, you know, maybe you just don't want to think about your food, that you can actually overturn the metabolic damage that that diet does if every day you eat that food within eight to 10 hours. So you're leaving longer for healing. So it's not a diet because you're not manipulating the type of food you're eating. You're just changing when you eat. Okay, I wanna make sure that that landed for you listening, okay? So what you're saying is that based on the research, the reason why a fasting protocol is not a diet, because a diet focuses on what you're eating and it focuses on 
calories and it focuses on a specific intake exactly. of food and the type of food. Yeah. A fasting protocol, many of them are neutral in terms of what type of food you're eating because a fasting protocol focuses on the window of time when you eat and windows of time when you don't. Am I tracking correctly? You've got it a, a thousand percent. And I, I want to share one really quick story Please. because I feel like this really was the perfect example of what I'm saying. Uh, last summer, I had a man come up to me that was over about 300 pounds. And uh, I was at a, uh, a retreat and he said, I, I need your help. And I said, tell me, tell me what's, you know, what's going on. He's like, I'm, I'm food addicted. I can't, I've tried every diet. I've tried to change my food. I can't do it. And I'm wondering if fasting can help me. And so I dove deeper and the man was drinking about 12 sodas a day. Oh my gosh. Now it would have made sense for me to say, Hey, could you give up your soda? But he just told me he was food addicted. And I also asked him, why do you need to be healthy? And he said, I need to stay alive for my wife and my kids. Hmm. It, was, it was a beautiful moment. So I said, okay, Todd, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, the first month, you're gonna eat all your normal food, whatever you wanna eat, we're just gonna compress it. And we started with a 12 hour eating window because he hadn't been fasting. First month, he was eating buffalo wings. He was drinking soda. The first month, just by compressing his food into one eating window for 12 hours, he lost close to 25, 30 pounds, somewhere in that range. He didn't change. He was still drinking 12 sodas. Why does compressing food into a 12-hour window but not changing what you eat, why does this protocol trigger weight loss? So we'll go back to our two energy systems. Okay. Let's use him as an example. He was eating food that was raising his blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And then when it would come back down, he would eat again. So he would mm. just go up and down and up and down in this one energy system. When I had him leave a longer period for fasting, what happened is he would go up and then he would come down and then he would metabolically switch into a healing state where he would, and, and we would see that his insulin and his glucose levels, they didn't accumulate because there was a pause. There was a moment where his body got to just relax and not feel another wave of sugar come. And in that relaxation, what ended up happening is the body could repair. So he left time to repair from the damage that the diet was doing. And, and, and just to sum this story up, after a year, he has lost close to 120 pounds. I talked to him a week, about a month ago. Um, his diet has completely changed. He's off sodas, he's eating healthy, and his, now he has one goal. He wants to feel proud to stand next to his family in their Christmas card photo. That's oh. his goal. That's freaking awesome. How does following that for a month or two with your current eating habits change the kinds of food choices that people start to make? Yeah. So there, there's, well, I'll say three major mechanisms that are going on. First, let's go back to our sugar burner system. When, let's say I eat a hamburger, fries, and a soda, my blood sugar has spiked. And all of a sudden, when it comes down, it will actually go lower. It'll spike as high as it spikes is as low as it'll go. And in that crash, I'm hungry again. The body gets another hunger sim si uh, signal. And so you get hungry every couple of hours because of the quality of the food that you're eating. So what ends up happening is if we can, we can allow a longer period where the body's healing, then in that down moment, it switches into a healing state and that craving stops. So that's mm. the first thing. Okay. And the second thing I want to say on that is when you're in the fat burning state, when you switch over, you make a ketone. A ketone goes up into the brain and it turns off the hunger hormone. So I knew that his eating was going to create more and more and more hunger. People who are food addicted 
are hungry a lot, even yeah. though they're eating a lot. So when I got him to switch over, we stabilized his blood sugar. We helped him make a ketone. The ketone went up into the brain, turned off hunger. So that was, that's number one. Number two is there's massive changes to the microbiome. So when you go into a fasted state, you start to change the diversity of the bacteria in your gut. And this is another mind blowing moment. Our cravings, are often because of these bacteria in our gut. Candida is a great example. It's a fungus that lives in the gut and it makes you crave sugar and carbohydrates. And so when you learn to go into these fasted states, you change that whole diversity of your microbiome. And then with the change in the microbiome, the bad bacteria go away that are causing the food cravings. So those were the two. And then the last one I'll say is we repaired his cells so they weren't inflamed anymore. Mm. And so his cells were finally getting some sort of nutrition. I mean, it's, 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 there's a lot of nuance to it, but it, this is why it works. And it's, I also love that it's zero cost. Yeah. And it doesn't require you to change what you eat. We're yeah. talking about when you eat. Yeah. And we're going to get into the how, but there's so much more research that I want to unpack with you mm -hmm. and the benefits. And I want to ask you something quickly. I don't know that there's a quick answer because when you say the fasting protocols also stimulate this keto thing going up to your brain, and that's a good thing, everything seems to be labeled keto. And so oh, I yeah. want to make sure I'm not I'm not misunderstanding because if I hear that keto is good, I'm going to go into the grocery store and be like, Ooh, look at that candy bar. It says keto. Oh uh, gosh, that must mean yes. it's good for my brain. And so <laughs> you're like, what does keto friendly food mean? I want to simplify it right here. And I really Please. appreciate you highlighting this because that we've gotten, we've lost our way in the, ke the ketogenic diet is now commercialized. Here's the simple thing. Just eat nature's carbs. Don't, don't worry about low carb, high carb. Let's focus on nature's carbs. What are those? What did nature provide us? Vegetables and fruit and things that are coming from the ground. Just because it's got less carbs doesn't mean it's good for you. So let's talk about the quality of carbs. And the more we can look at our carbohydrates and say, did the earth provide this? Did this grow from the earth? Or was this made in, in, a, in, a, in a lab, in a warehouse somewhere? So let's start there. That's, that's the first thing. And then okay. the second thing is I like, I mean, my approach to getting these ketones is through fasting. I, I actually, to, to the story about Todd, it's, I think we're going to keep losing our way if we're debating low carb, high carb, um, you know, calorie counting. Let's just, let's put that aside for a moment and let's just know that we, the, we have to go through periods where we are not eating so that we can make these ketones that our, our brain desperately needs. So I don't know if that helps, but that's the way I look at it. That helps a lot because I think if we can continue to beat the drum as you're listening to Dr. Mindy and me as I try to really wrap my brain around the simplicity of this, if you can keep coming back to the distinction between what you're eating yeah. versus when you're eating Amen. and that the protocol around when you're eating is what we're talking about. We're not talking about calorie restriction. We're not talking about disordered eating. We are talking about a protocol that has profound research that you are doing in order to activate healing and health responses. And one thing I'd like to do before we jump into a little bit more of the protocol, of the options with this, of how to get started, of what you can expect is, who is fasting an option for mm -hmm. and who would you say shouldn't consider it or at least need to get a sign off from a medical doctor before they do? Yeah. Thank you for asking this question because I really want to make sure that people are very safe with how they use this tool. 
So um, the first thing, what might shock people is that for prediabetes, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, it's incredible for. And I'm going to put a little asterisk, but I highly encourage you to bring your doctor on this journey with you. This is not, if you have diabetes, this is not, fasting isn't a solo journey. You need to bring your doctor with you. And, and the, I, I can't tell you the number of doctors that have flooded my YouTube channel. I leave the, the science there so they can understand it, so that they can be in collaboration with their, with their patients. So, but to answer the who is it not for, I think that's the most important thing to say. It is not for the woman who's pregnant. This is not your tool if you're pregnant. Your baby needs calories. It, this is not it. Um, oh. if, if you're nursing, as I go through the different healing mechanisms that happen, you need to keep your fast very low because fasting can start to create a detox reaction. And all the toxins that you're detoxing will go into your breast milk, will go in, mm. which will go into your baby. So we want to keep fast under 15 hours for nursing women. And then the third one that comes up a lot is people who have any kind of eating disorders or food, food challenges um, that would be triggered by going into this fasted state. Great. Thank you for that. <laughs> this is going to sound like a dumb question, but I, um, maybe we should talk about the types of fasting because, for example, I woke up and I have not had breakfast yet. Nice. But I am drinking coffee with milk in it. Yep. So does technically that mean I'm fasting? Is coffee allowed? Is it yeah. only water? Like, how, what, what are you doing when you're fasting? It, it's so funny, Mel, because this is the most common question I've got. Really? Yeah. What about my coffee? Like, everybody's yeah. in until we get to the coffee topic. And then they're like, wait a second. I was in, and now I need to know about my coffee. Okay. So let's let me explain this. Um, in order to get into the fasted state, you need your blood sugar to start to decline. So your body registers that there's no nutrients, there's no blood sugar increase for anywhere from an eight to 12 hour period. Oh. So at eight hours, what happens is the body starts to metabolically switch over into the fat burning state. For some people, that switch will happen quickly and 10 hours are in, they're into the fasted state. For others, it usually takes about 12 hours. So if your cup of coffee doesn't spike your blood sugar, you're good. You're golden. It's what you put in your coffee that is going to affect that. So, <laughs> right? So creamer, You mean the stuff that makes it taste like candy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got it. Creamer, creamer is is not going to be great. Sugar's not going to be great. Um, you know, we're not talking you get to walk in and drink a frappuccino and you're still in a fasted state because it has coffee in it. It has to not elevate your blood sugar. Typically, a full fat cream won't because fat stabilizes your blood sugar. So your example if it's coffee with full fat cream, you're probably pretty good. Hmm. And you're staying in that fasted state. Got it. Okay. I've only heard of intermittent fasting. See, I thought all fasting was intermittent fasting. I didn't realize until I looked at your research that there are six different types of fasting because there are six different lengths of time that you can fast for a health benefit. Yep. And so could you walk us all through the different lengths that you can fast and what each one of them produces in terms of a healing or a health benefit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the first one is intermittent fasting. It starts about 12 hours without food. And the window is about 12 to 15 hours without food. You're going to see your glucose levels come down. You're going to see inflammation come down. And you're going to start to see growth hormone kick in, which helps you burn fat and slow the aging process. The next window is 17 hours. This is where autophagy kicks in. Autophagy is your body's 
own internal repair system. So your cells are gonna get rid of things inside the cell that don't work anymore. They're gonna repair cellular parts and they're gonna actually kill cells that might be going rogue like a cancer cell. So the 17 hour mark starts this autophagy process. 24 hours is the gut reset. This is where intestinal stem cells inside your gut start to be produced, repairing any leaky gut situation, repairing and getting rid of bad bacteria, changing the whole environment of your gut. So it's great for anybody who has been on antibiotics multiple times, has had a lot of, been eating poor food for a long time, is constipated um, and needs to repair that gut go 24 hours and we'll see a dramatic shift. 36 hours is the fat burning reset. That's long enough for your body to go find the food it stored years ago in fat. So all fat is, is your body stored excess somewhere. And it did that to save your life. It didn't want to store it around your organs, so it stored it around your belly. At 36 hours, you are sending a signal to your body to go burn that and to get rid of it, of that storage. Uh, 48 hours, you reset your whole dopamine system. I call it the dopamine reset. This is where all of a sudden you get new dopamine receptor sites that are going to make you increase happiness. Those, those receptor sites will be there long after the 48 hours. And then 72 hours is the immune reset. This is where we can get rid of stagnant parts of our immune system, specifically our white blood cells. We can get rid of them and new white blood cells will kick in and serve us in a bigger and better way. And if we're going to start with the first type of fasting and that window of time is 12 to 16 hours. And let's just say that anyone listening to this is so passionate about this topic and so excited to try it. Could you just say, okay, you're done listening to this podcast. You decide that you're going to introduce fasting and that it's safe for you to do so. Do you count the 12 to 16 hour window in intermittent fasting? Yes. The moment you go to bed, do you count it when you stop eating at night? Is the period of time when you're sleeping considered the fast? Like, can you just like put me at the starting line for how you even do this? Yes, it's, it's, the, it's the moment that the last piece of food goes in your mouth. Okay. And this includes drinks too. So your wine at night, I mean, it's, it's like the mouth is done. You okay. Water, that starts the clock. Okay. okay. And it's the easiest way to start by starting the clock at night. So you're going to bed at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is the beginning of this 12 to 16 hour window. Yes. And yep. the time that you're sleeping counts in the fasting. Now with the 12 to hour window, this is intermittent fasting. What is the health benefit of doing this kind of fasting as a protocol? So the, the first thing is you'll make this ketone by, so you're burning fat. Okay. You, okay. So we start to see inflammation come down. And why is that helpful? When, when inflammation is high, you are blocking nutrients from getting in the cell. And if we just put it in the terms of what you might feel, this is your aches and pains. This is your brain fog. This hmm. inflammation is when we're starting to see like swelling of our body parts. And this is why we don't feel good. This is why we move stiffly. This is why we think con our thoughts are congested because of this inflammation. So in that window, we're starting to see the inflammation come down. Hmm. The third thing is we're seeing growth hormone kick in. Growth hormone, we stop getting after 30 because we don't, it's, it's a hormone that helps us burn fat and slows down the aging process. What's so, its name? What, what, what magical thing is this? Yeah, agreed, right? Yeah, I know. Your own body makes it, but you don't get it after 30. So you have to go make it yourself. And one of the ways you can do it is by intermittent fasting 12 to 16 hours. And if you wow. do that on a regular basis, you are, this is the anti-aging piece.
you are actually slowing aging down because you're stimulating this hormone that turns down the the aging process amazing i want to make this so easy for somebody to do yeah so if you go to bed at 9 p.m yep. and you sleep and you wake up you know let's just say at 7 a.m you've already taught us that the eight hour mark is when you typically tip into this metabolic switching yep. so at around 5 a.m you've been sleeping for eight hours you are now in this state where you've switched over into what you call the fat burning state this is the state where you are using the other system. And so if you then wake up at 7 a.m., you're now 10 hours into this. And yep. to do intermittent fasting, you then wouldn't start eating until somewhere between, if I'm tracking the math right, 9 a.m. or and 12 p.m. noon. Is that right? You got it. Okay, great. So if you go to bed, everybody, at 9 o'clock at night, by the time 5 a.m. hits, you, my friend, have switched your metabolic state. Good job. Yeah. And if you continue this protocol to somewhere between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m., you now are unlocking all of this health benefit because you are not only getting this growth hormone, you are sending this ketone thing up to your brain, which will reduce brain frog, frog, I keep calling it frog. <laughs> It'll give you more energy and it also helps you lose weight. It help, well, yeah, because the only way to make a ketone is by burning fat. Oh, so at the eight hour mark, while you're sleeping and dreaming everybody, you've now just popped your body into the fat burning stage. Is this why you can lose belly fat? Yes. By doing this protocol? Yes. yes. Shut up. Yeah. Just tipping my body into this other cycle of fat burning would do a big help in helping me burn that fat. You got it. Because the only way you make a ketone is by burning fat. Wow. One, one last thing I want to say about a ketone okay, is that when it comes on, it, it shuts that hunger hormone down, but it also upregulates or it makes, let me, let's keep it simple. It yeah. makes a neurotransmitter called GABA. So when GABA comes on, it calms you. Mm. It is, it's so it, it, people who go into fasted states, they'll tell you that how calm they feel. I mean, I. I traveled home yesterday on a flight and I hadn't eaten in about maybe 18, 19 hours. And by the time I got home, I was, I thought on the plane, I was like, I'm so excited to go home and eat. I can't wait to see what kind of food I have at home. And by the time I got home, I wasn't hungry. And I had this really calm, beautiful feeling in my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got GABA right now. Mm -hmm. So when you hit that 12 to 16 hour window, you would think you're going to go be like crazy and manic, but because of the production of this ketone, the opposite happens. The hunger turns off, you get more focused, you get calmer, and now your body's ready to repair for you. Now, is this a protocol that you just introduce into your life? And this is just how you roll through life. So this is yeah. not like you try it today and then you, you do it another yeah. day where you want some like sharper thinking. This is actually a cycling that you're going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I call it a fasting lifestyle. Build yourself a fasting lifestyle. Well, if you really think about it, between the fact that we go through a cycle of being awake during the day and asleep at night, and you go through a cycle of circadian rhythms you're talking about doing this kind of cycling that your body is designed to do like other cycles in order to unlock health benefits. Like That's if right. I kind of think about it that way, yeah. so much of your body is designed to turn on and turn off and yep. be in balance. And yep. this helps you get back to it. 
So the next type of fasting is one that you do for a 17 hour window. Yeah. So what is that type of fasting and what are the benefits? So, so as you move into that 17 hours without food, again, let's give all the credit to the body. Your body's so smart that it goes, huh? Okay. Food's not coming. Nutrients aren't coming. So I better make sure that the inside of our cells are working properly. So it's a state called autophagy. And what the cells will do when they sense that there's no influx of nutrients or glucose, which is sugar, they start to turn within and eat the bad parts of the cell. Things that are not working, they will start to consume that. Autophagy basically means self-eating. So it's like an internal cellular detox. So this is another place where the anti-aging piece comes in is that you've now asked your body to make itself better when you hit that 17 hour mark. And so it will repair mitochondria and all the internal body parts of the cell so that it can be stronger for your survival. That's what it's doing. It, it is, pro, it, we are programmed to stay alive. And so at 17 hours, the cells start to become better versions of themselves. And if there's a cell that is not good, like cancer cells, it will actually kill that cell at 17 hours and it will get rid of that cell because it's a weak member of the survival team. The greatest study ever done on women was done on women recovering from breast cancer. And when they, when they fasted as little as 13 hours every single day, they saw that they had a 64% less reoccurrence of breast cancer. Yeah. Say that again. When women who had breast cancer went after they had traditional treatment, started to build a fasting lifestyle of 13 hours. So this isn't even full autophagy we're talking about. They had a 64% less reoccurrence of that cancer coming back. That's incredible. What you're almost describing as a healing response when you use this protocol is that there is a natural almost like chemo inside you effect yeah. Yeah. where your body in that resting period of being able to recover from a cycle of eating this protocol of not introducing new nutrients allows the body to weed out all the crap that's there yes, yes. That's um just for my timekeepers this autophagy state of fasting protocol of 17 hours. That would be as if you were going to bed at 9 p.m., that's the last time you ate, and you didn't start eating again until 1 p.m. Exactly. And is this something that people, that that if you're going to do this autophagy fasting, is this for only periods of time? Is this something that people do as their fasting protocol forever? Or is this something that you start with intermittent and then you bump it up to get this little effect or is this for or people that have disease? Like who's doing autophagy? Yeah. It's, it's really personal preference. And here's the beautiful thing is once this is why it's not a diet. Fasting gets easier the more you do it. So what I have experienced is that people will love the way they feel at 15 hours and want to go longer. So 17 hours is you, you know, if you can go longer, go longer. Now I will tell you from the community of millions of people that we've been taking through these fasts that most people use autophagy fasting, like after a vacation where they've overdone it, their food, um, you know, if they want to detox without supplements. Um, so people do lean into it for, healing their body in a deeper way, like a cellular cleansing when there has been an overabundance of poor lifestyle choices. I read in your work that autophagy fasting can also increase your sex drive. Well, so as growth hormone goes up, 
Yep. So what we start to see again is that as the body starts to go into this healing state, what will end up happening is there'll be an increase in hormones. Estrogen's a big one, and we can talk about that in a moment too, which of course is going to increase your libido. And I also read that this is a great protocol based on the research if you feel like a cold coming on or you feel oh, yeah. something like instead of like you would think it would be the opposite, yeah. but that actually doing the autophagy protocol of a 17 hour fast, if you start to feel punkish or you get this like that, this is a great zero cost, yeah. well researched homeopathic way to activate your body's ability to fight a cold. Why is that? So we go back to autophagy. You, that intelligence inside your cell is going to get rid of anything that doesn't serve it. So if there are bacteria and viruses in there, it's going to push those out. It's like, hey, the party's done in here. I need everybody to leave. <laughs> And I want to point out one of the greatest studies, again, I found during COVID that I just wanted everybody to know. Viruses don't have their own energy system. So they have to live off of yours. So when they come into a cell that's a sugar burner, they have a party. They can gain momentum. They can live off that sugar and replicate. When they come into a cell that is in a state of autophagy, they die. They can't replicate. There's no fuel source for them. Mm, that's pretty cool. It's amazing. All right, let's talk about the third uh, type of fasting, which is a 24-hour window, and this one you call gut reset fast. Can you talk to us about that? At 24 hours, this was a study out of MIT, we see that the cells inside your gut start to repair themselves. We call those stem cells. They are intestinal stem cells. And so what happens, again, let's go back to why the body does this, is you've now gone 24 hours without food. So it needs to repair the digestive system, get rid of the bad bacteria that don't serve you, and increase the good bacteria and change that environment for your survival. So intestinal stem cells, get made at 24 hours. And I don't know if you know, stem cells are thousands of dollars right now. You can get them injected into you or you can get them free by learning how to fast. And the next one is fat burner fast, 36 hour fast. Is that even safe not to eat food for 36 hours? Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the, the research that I show on that one was, and this is that at 36 hours without food, followed by 12 hours of eating, done over a 30-day period, they saw that there was a significant change in belly fat, specifically. Okay, let's break this down, because yes. everybody just was like, hold on, belly fat? Wait, what, what was she talking about? <laughs> okay, so the protocol was, and this was a study yep. that you're citing, yes. that the protocol was for 30 days straight, Yes. You would do a cycling where you didn't eat for 36 hours and then you would eat for 12 hours and then you'd go into another 36 hour window of fasting protocol, then another 12 and you did that 30 times in a row? Yes. Okay. And then belly fat melted away and hold on, I got to ask a question. How do you manage not being a complete bitch? Because I get really angry when I'm hungry. That's why you don't start with a 36 hour fast. You start with a 12 hour fast and you train oh, yourself. Gotcha. Okay. Just like if you want to run a marathon, you don't just throw your tennis shoes, all your running shoes on and just go 12 miles. True. True. So you have to train, you start with the lower fast. And I just so I don't lose people, I want to point out that what we've seen in my community is that sometimes all it takes to unstick your weight is one 36 hour fast. It has this metabolic like switch it makes on burning fat because you're training your body to go find 
what it stored years ago. Go find the glucose you stored years ago. Go find the toxins that are in there. Go find that. I have another fuel source that you have prepared me for this day. I'm asking you to burn that fuel source now. Got it. Okay. But we start, is what I'm hearing, by training ourselves with the intermittent fasting yeah. protocol, which is what I laid out by saying stopping eating at 9, start eating back between 9 and 12 p.m. And, of course, you can shift that window by stopping eating at 7 p.m. And then you move oh, it yeah. up. So, oh, yeah. okay, got it. The next fast is a 48-hour fast, which you call a dopamine reset fast. Yes. What is that and how does the science work here? So that was a study that I found that showed 48 hours without food reset our dopamine system. And it did that by improving not only the way in which dopamine is made in our brain, mm -hmm. but it opened up more dopamine receptor sites. So there was more availability for dopamine to get in to our cells for us to be able to experience the benefits of dopamine. And that study also showed that it lowered anxiety levels. Yeah. Cause you're, cause now you've got dopamine. Yep. You've got ketones, which are making GABA. Oh. So dopamine is the, is motivation. GABA is, is calming. And so at 48 hours, you have now created new receptor sites for dopamine. So you have more availability to pull dopamine in and you're calm, so you're calm and motivated. Why, why would the body do this? Because if I'm a, in my cave person days, I, I have to become more focused, more calm, more motivated to go find food when I'm 48 hours in to no food. So it's a primal switch that our body clicks in in the absence of food at 48 hours. Now, I will tell you what we've clinically seen is that when people reintroduce food, not only do they enjoy food more, which is obvious, like you haven't been eating for 48 hours, of course you're going to enjoy it more, but that they notice happiness levels are higher hmm. for weeks following one 48-hour fast. And we have seen that. We have a community of millions of people that we have asked to share their stories and we just collect the data, and that is a pretty consistent one that we see. I would imagine, though, for uh, anybody on any kind of medication like a uh, antidepressant or an anxiety medication or something for ADHD or anything else, you would want to talk to your doctor about the protocol Absolutely. of how this works while you're on prescription medication. But again, you just go back to starting with the training of the tool of intermittent, which is 12 to 16. The exactly. final one that you reported on is this immune reset fast, which is for more than 72 hours. Yeah. That sounds pretty damn extreme. You know what's really funny is that everybody says that until they try it. Okay. And then they try it and their life changes. Okay, so, so tell me what's going to happen in my life if I start the intermittent fasting protocol as my lifestyle of eating cycling, and then I go and do a 72-hour immune reset fast. So that the immune reset was based off of a scientist out of USC who mm -hmm. discovered that at 72 hours, the whole immune system reboots itself. And he studied people going through chemotherapy. And he found that one of the problems with chemotherapy is that it completely wipes out the whole immune system. And then there's no, the immune system's very low afterwards. But if he put people in a 72 hour fast before they go into chemo, while they're in chemo, after chemo, around the chemo, that there was a re-energizing of, of white blood cells. So they didn't have that depletion afterwards. We're back at the stem cells. At 72 hours, your body makes stem cells. Stem cells are cells that can go anywhere in your body and repair. What Walter Longo saw was that they repaired white blood cells. But what we're now, people are witnessing is that it also repairs, you know, chronic injuries. It repairs neurons in the brain. 
that have been degenerating. It, it, it repairs whatever you need it to repair because the body's that smart. Once it gets stem cells, it finds what you need repair on, not what I need repair on. Wow. Can you bottom line this? What are the four ways that a fasting protocol helps you heal naturally? So you click on an intelligence inside your body that you can only get in the absence of food. And that intelligence will start to bring inflammation down. It will start to get rid of the bad parts that are slowing the healing response. It will increase the power of the batteries of your cell called your mitochondria. So it starts to repair you in a way that we have seen nothing repair a person before. Unbelievable. What is the fasting protocol that is going to help me lose belly fat? Well, it will be. <laughs> Bring it on, woman. Come on now. Don't hold back, it's Dr. It's a million Mindy. dollar question. Yes, it uh, is. It's a million dollar question. Start with intermittent fasting. Just okay. get yourself somewhere consistently 12 to 15 hours. And over time, you will lose belly fat. Like how much time are we talking? Uh, give it 90 days. 90 days of an intermittent fasting protocol of eating in basically a 12-hour window. And I got 90 days to see the menopause middle. All right, I'm going to try it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Holy cow. Don't you feel like you just got a PhD in the science of fasting? Was that not extraordinary? Well, we're only just beginning because that's part one. See, I want you to have the science and the baseline understanding before we jump into the how. You got to know why you're doing something, how it's going to impact your body. And that's what we're going to talk about next. How do you get started? What does that even look like? And what are three hacks that you can use to make this easier? And most importantly, most importantly, there's a massive important difference between the protocol that you follow if you are born male and the protocol that you follow if you are born a female. This has to do with your hormone cycles. And we're going to learn all of that in the next part of this incredible series that we're doing with Dr. Mindy. So don't you dare go anywhere. Please share this if you got value out of it and you get your butt right back here for the next episode because we are going to set you up with the step-by-step -step guide to getting started and implementing all of this amazing science into your life. And in case nobody else tells you, I want to tell you, I freaking love you. I believe in you. And I believe in your ability to make small changes and to leverage this incredible research to unlock the healing and healthy systems in your body, which will help you create a better life. All righty. You heard Dr. Mindy. My fasting window's closed. I got to go eat. And I'll talk to you in a few days. Bye. Okay, I got to hop into place here. All you need to know right now is that, oh wait, I should start over. Do we say hacks? How does this end this thing? Or do we cycles or, I think hacks was at the beginning. Brain frog, frog. See, I, I need to fast because I can't even <laughs> say the like damn word. <laughs> brain fog, reduce brain frog, frog. I keep calling it frog. GABA. Do you know what GABA? Do you know what GABA? Doesn't is? GABA have something to do with your hunger? It's it's no, it's See, calming. don't it don't ask me. <laughs> okay, no worries. Sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'll take a test and fail on my own show for everybody. Great. Okay, great. Oh, and one more thing. And no. This is not a blooper. <laughs> this is the legal language. You know what the lawyers write and what I need to read to you. This podcast is presented solely for educational and entertainment purposes. I'm just your friend. I am not a licensed therapist. And this podcast is not intended as a substitute for the advice of a physician, professional coach, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. Got it? Good. I'll see you in the next episode.
Hey, YouTube, thank you so much for being here. Don't you just love Dr. Mindy? Great. Here's where you want to go next.